Hi guys, Niall here. Welcome back to the Age of 20 BIM channel. Today we're going to talk about how we produce concrete plinths en masse for our pharmaceutical and industrial clients. Uh, this may not be something that you have to concern yourself too much when you're doing domestic and commercial works, but when you're working in the pharmaceutical and industrial, you have a lot of civils works that are required just to support various processes throughout the, the building. And we may have small projects that only have a dozen or so um, support plinths, but we could potentially have up to several hundred on some of the larger projects. And at that scale, you really need the capacity to place them quickly, accurately, and have them schedulable. And ideally, you want to do that in a way that is easily accessible to any level of Revit user. So the way we have done it, uh, historically, people have used things like um, they'd use a slab in place. They might use a generic model family so that they can achieve the chamfers on the edges. But in our experience, we have found that placing columns that the families are created to match, the column families are actually created to match the plinth styles is the most efficient way of placing them accurately throughout the project as well as scheduling them in the aftermath. So as you can see on screen, we have PL1 and PL2 here. And when I select PL1, you can see it's labeled plint in brackets afterwards, column, so that anyone coming in behind me in the project timeline knows how it's been generated. And then we have a quick descriptor. This is not our naming convention. This is just a naming convention that I'm using for the video. So we've got plint 430 by 430. So that 430 by 430 matches the actual dimension value of the, the depth and the width and the breadth of the, of the, um, the plint. So we have PL1 and PL2 is an intermediate size one. So we've got 900 by 570. That might be something more suited to an electrical panel, whereas this may be something like a tank vessel leg or something like that. But let's say we want to create a third one and we want to create one that is suitable for an AHU. So I'm going to copy this. Um, I'm not going to do that first. First things first, I'm going to copy it down. And then I'm going to select that, go into edit type, duplicate, and we're going to give it a notional 3000 by 1000. I'm going to scroll down to the dimensions at the bottom. 3,000 by 1,000, not 30,000. That would be a very long HU. Press OK. And you can see straight away we have a new HU placed, HU plant placed. I can press tag and um, you'll see that there's no type mark being assigned to this yet. So I'm going to go select the new plant, press edit type, go down to my type mark and put in PL3 to match the naming convention of the others. Okay. So now we've created a new plinth and very quickly, very easily um, by duplicating the existing one. But if we want to really place them quickly on mass, what we want to do is go into the structural tab and select column or better yet, press CL as the shortcut key, as the short key, sorry, to press column. And you'll see that it's selected the plinth 430 by 430 or PL1 variant. So straight away, we know that we're on level zero on the floor plan here. I want to give it a height, it's going to be unconnected, and I'm going to give it 150. And now you can really see how quickly we can place these. And the great thing about the columns is they snap into alignments. So you can actually set out an alignment and the columns will snap as you're placing them, which is fantastically fast. It makes it very, very efficient placing dozens of potentially hundreds of these. So one, two, three, four. If you want to get very detailed, we can use dimensions to set them out as equidistance and then I'm going to um, use the align tool select multiple alignment press the first one and snap them all in that direction as well okay so you can see how fast the placement of them actually were and you'll see when we go to section that they've been placed at exactly 150 mil above the ground floor as per the height of the column so that is a very very speedy replication of plinths throughout so we have this here, but you can see that our column base is actually going below the depth of it. Now, uh, our plinth base. So sometimes the plinth structure may actually delve down into the structure of the slab in some way, or there may be a thickening underneath. So you may have this kind of detail. The important thing is that we actually have a common structural material between the slab and the plinth, so that I can just merely select the plinth, give it a join condition, Join the two, and as you can see, the material is the same, and you have a clear delineation. If I pull back the level, you'll see that there's a clear divide between the two. Now, we may have to work on the object styles so that the section presents the same, but you can even see, as a column family, we have the chamfer in place. And the chamfer is, the chamfer is created in a very, very straightforward way. 
So we have the chamfer height of 15. The chamfer is normally square. It's normally at 45 degrees. So we can apply a chamfer height of 100 if we wish. And you see in that instance we get a very, very deep chamfer. And the way we created this is very simple. So rather than having two values that offset the corner, when I go into the actual column family and I go to the 3D view, I can select the top and you'll see that the top is actually a separate mass and it's merely a mass that's applied to the top level that flexes with the conditions of the parameters of the column family. And all we need to do is set the overall depth basically of that top plane. So I can say that as a hundred as I did in the model. So what's fantastic about this now is that yes, we place multiple plinths and yes, we have um, an accurate way of placing them very quickly and replicating them. And we can even change the shape of them. If we have an L shape one, we can create an L shape beam uh, column family to suit. And we can give it varying descriptors for the lengths around it so that we don't get, um, so that we can clearly designate which each length rather than a, a uniformity of shape of L that may not suit every eventual case. Okay. But what's fantastic about this now is I can go into my structural column schedule and you can see at the moment I've got itemized every instance selected and I've got five PL1s, a PL2 and a PL3. So I can go into my fields here under filter, sorting, grouping. I can give a footer, title count and totals. And now we know that we have five PL1s, one PL2 and one PL3. And we can pass that over to our QS for him to uh, calculate the value of all of that if required so that is my preferred way of creating plinths on mass in the revit environment to support plant equipment machinery air handling units tank vessels support legs that kind of thing if you found this useful please make sure to like and subscribe um, any comments or questions you have below please and please let me know uh, i'm happy to go through the family generation process for the column if needs be but it is quite um basic as you saw but if you require that as well let me know and i'll do a follow-up video on that so this is the 8020 bim channel my name is niall thank you for tuning in and uh, look forward to having you back again take care now bye bye